good morning. good morning. If you haven't figured it out yet, it is Vacation Bible School Sunday, which means we are going to worship today, but we are also going to have a lot of fun. And I want you to just jump in and participate. Um, if you feel like you need to regress to your childhood to do that, just do that. It'll be perfectly fine. We do want to let you know about the announcements of things that are going on. Um, we do have some, some kids going to tween camp this week, so be in prayer for them. And just a reminder, we're meeting here at 1230 tomorrow for the carpool for that. So I will see you there for that if that applies to you. And then this Wednesday, we start viewing season four of The Chosen on our Wednesday nights. That's at seven o'clock. You are all welcome to come and participate in that. All of those details are in your bulletin this morning as well as at our church website. And as we do begin to worship this morning, I invite you to stand. And on the back of your bulletin, you will find um, the scripture for this morning, which tells us a little bit about being in the kingdom. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I invite you to read the scriptures in bold as we worship together. God has rescued us from the control of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before all creation. All things in heaven and earth were created by him and for him, and he holds all creation together. God, is in all, God in all his fullness was pleased to dwell in Christ, and through him God reconciled all things to himself. He brought peace through Christ's blood on the cross. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you before him as a people who are holy, faultless and without blame. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray together this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are indeed thankful to gather in your house to call upon your name, to worship you in this special way this morning as we celebrate our vacation Bible school and all that has been done and taught this week. We pray your blessing upon this service, those gathered here and we ask that you, most of all, would come, fill us with your Holy Spirit, and find our worship acceptable. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning, we are going to be singing some Vacation Bible School songs, and so I want to teach you the motions for those, because that's the way we do it here at VBS. And so this first song, you may have heard it before. It's Come Thou Almighty King. The motions are very simple. We want to welcome our King, so Come Thou Almighty King. Help us thy praise to sing, right? Help us to praise. Our Father is all glorious, and he's over all victorious. So come to reign over us, ancient of days. Let's sing together this morning. Thy name to see, 
may be seated. Well, at this time, we are going to worship by receiving our regular tithes and offerings, and I have a couple that are supposed to be coming and help us with that. Here they come. All right. Just watch out for the props. There we go. All right, let's pray this morning. Father, you are the giver of all good gifts. And we are thankful for this chance to give back to you so that what we give can be used for the work of your kingdom. Bless the gift and the giver this morning, we pray. Amen. All right, I am going to teach you our theme song now. So I invite you to get up on your feet because we always sing better up on our feet at Vacation Bible School. And again, pretty straightforward motions. Can you stand strong? There you go, there you go. Can you be strong? All right. Can you be brave? All right. That's the most of it. So let's sing this morning. Trust in God alone, we will stand, stand upon his word, and whatever comes our way, we are strong, and we are brave, his truth, truth will be our guide through the day, and the darkest night, our God will give us strength, we are strong, and we are brave, and we will stand together, stand darkest night our god will give us strength we are strong and we are brave and we will stand together stand forever we will stand strong standing up for god each day we will stand strong and we will stand together God 
have a seat. I think at least at some point in vacation Bible school, we learned about prayer. We did. Or we will learn about prayer. It's time for us to pray. I ask that you would remember those in our world who suffer today from war, from fighting, from natural disaster. Remember our nation and its leaders. Pray for those who serve in our armed forces, who function as law enforcement agents and first responders. Remember Dorothy and Reddick and Tammy. Carly, pray for Andy and Edna and Clara, for Ann. And we continue to pray, uh, praise. Cindy's eye is healing well, but we pray that it will continue to heal completely. Are there others that you would mention this morning? Unspoken prayer request you might want to indicate this morning. Let's pray together. Father and God, today we are indeed thankful that we can call upon your name, bring our burdens and needs to you, and to intercede for those in our world and our families. Today we pray for those in our world who are suffering from sickness or war or pestilence, from famine, natural disasters of every kind. We pray that your work and will will be done in and through your church as we reach out to those in need. We pray for our nation, its leaders. We pray for our soldiers and sailors, our airmen and Marines, those functioning as Coast Guard. We pray for our law enforcement agents and first responders. We pray that your hand would guide them and your peace would be with them. Today we ask that you would be with Dorothy and Reddick and Tammy, with Carly and Andy and Edna and Clara and Ann and with Cindy. We just pray that your healing touch would be upon them. We pray for traveling mercies for Bailey and for Hudson. And we pray for Tristan's family in this difficult time. We pray for those unspoken prayer requests that have been brought into your house and we ask that you would be mindful of them. Undertake for each one. Help us to trust you with the deep needs of our life. Bless the remainder of this service, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, here at Kingdom Rock, we have been learning that what it means to stand strong is to stand in our faith in God and to follow after him. And we've done that with Bible stories, of course, but also through fun activities and using our imagination at Imagination Station and, of course, having some fun outside with games. And we want to share with you a little bit of that experience this morning. So my first question is, do I have any VBS kids that are brave enough to come help me out with a little review up here? I see one. No, she's... Oh, I see another one. All right, if you're, if, come on up if you're brave enough. Come on up. And you can just join me up here on the platform. Let's give them a hand because it takes a lot of courage to come up here. All right, y'all kind of line up right there so they can see your beautiful faces. All right, so on the first day, and y'all know how to do the motions, right? Because we got to show them how to do the motions. Come on up here, Mr. Rhett. Come on up, Miss Andy. Here, 
there you go. All right. So we learned, anytime we learned about our Bible point, that's fine. It's fine. Here, you stand right here beside me. There you go. And that you have to stand strong. So on the first day, do you remember we learned that God's love, what? Let's, stand strong. That's right. Stand strong. So whenever you hear that, that's how you have to respond, right? So we learn that God's love helps us to and strong very good and our bible verse y'all can turn around if you need to see it on the screen we learned i love you lord you are my strength and that psalms 18 1 so can y'all say that with me here we go i love you lord you are my strength psalms 18 1 and every time we had a bible clue for our story right and if you remember since our first day was about love do you remember, where was our clue for our Bible story? That's right. Can you go get that for me, Luke? Thank you. So our clue was hidden on the heart, and it said, An earthly king named David writes about his love for the king of the universe, God. So we learned about Psalms 23, which is about sheep and shepherds. So let's see. Can you remember at least two things? about psalm 23 i know i know we learned that god is our shepherd so we have all that we need i heard some of you out there some of you not right and we learned that god gives us rest that's right i'm giving you clues over here guys i'm helping you out and that god shows us the way to go because he leads us in right paths what happens if if we have to go through dark times is he still with us he is still with us and even if we have to be like in our enemy's presence god's love is so awesome it's like what we get a a feast right right so those are the things that we learned on day one all right day two we learned that prayer helps us to stand strong. And here was our Bible verse. Y'all ready? You can look at the screen if you need to. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And that's Philippians 4, 6. Such good advice because there are lots of things that we worry about in life. But instead, we should be praying. And because we were going to be talking about prayer, do you remember where our clue was hidden that night? That's right, in the golden bowl. And it said, pray, pray, you can do it. Build that wall. Pray, pray, you can do it. No worries at all. So what do y'all remember about the Bible story? It involved Nehemiah. Nehemiah had an important but dangerous job. Do you remember what that was? He had to... He was the cupbearer, that's right. And he had to drink before the king so that if there was poison in the drink, he would get it and not the king. So very important but very dangerous. But he got news that the wall around Jerusalem was in rubble. And how did that make him feel? He was very sad, right? So what did he do? He prayed. And then he went back and he gathered the people and he helped them to build the wall. Now, did the building of the wall go easy or were there problems? There were problems. What were some of the problems? That's right. Some people made fun of them. They were like, look at those crazy Jews trying to build that wall. And then even they were threatened to send the army after them. So do you remember while one person would work, what did the other person do? Stand guard, right? And did they get the ball, wall built? They did. Do you remember how long it took? 52 days, which wasn't much for building that great, big, huge wall, right? And that was day two. Well, we have a song that goes with day two. I'm going to let y'all go back and sit down. Thank you for helping us. All right. And this, the motions for this song is just like for our verse. Don't worry, instead pray. So will you stand on your feet so that we can sing this morning?
Don't worry about anything instead pray about everything Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done Don't worry instead pray Don't worry instead pray Don't worry about anything instead pray about everything tell god what you need and thank him for all he has done don't worry he said pray don't worry he said pray You may have a seat. Well, on day three, we learned that trusting God helps us to stand strong. Yes. And we learned this Bible verse that we want to trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is our eternal rock. And those of you that were with us, do you remember what does eternal mean? Just say it, forever, right, forever. And a great big rock, is it going anywhere? No. So our God is the forever one that is always there, and that's why we can trust in him. So let's put that Bible verse all together and say it nice and loud. Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is our eternal rock. And that's Isaiah 26, 4. Who remembers where our clue was? Lakeland, where was it? Behind the rock, that's right. And it says, Jesus died for our sins. Hallelujah! He was raised to life again. And so that night we shared the story about Jesus and what he did for us for forgiveness. And those of you that were with me in the Bible story that night, we had this this simple little picture. Now you may not be able to see it all the way in the back. So those of you that might remember, what's, what's on this side? God, yep, and he's our king, and he loves us. And what's on this side? Me, right. And God created us, and God wants to be with us, and as long as we're following him and trusting in him, we are good and close. But have we always done what God wants us to do? No, and we talked about some of those choices that we make, and when we make those choices... Sin, disobedience, what does it do to me and God? Separates us. And that makes God sad. But because of what Jesus did, we can be forgiven and come back into relationship with him. And as we talked about that, we had prayer time. And then as a way to show that for the children that they wanted to follow God, they all made a handprint and added it to our cross. So isn't this a beautiful, beautiful symbol of what God is doing in the lives of our children this week? And that was our day three. Well, let me tell you about our mission offering. We do an offering with VBS every year because while we're having fun and learning about God, we also want to do something for others. And so our program this year was called Spiritual Olympians. The funds that we raise will go toward helping children around the world have resources like Vacation Bible School so that they can learn about God and his grace and love wherever they are. And we received um, a little bit over $344 this week, but we want to give you a chance 
to give to this offering if you haven't had a chance. So first, I need somebody in the back to bring our offering plates up forward. And then I have a couple of volunteers that are helping me with this offering this morning. Thank you, Tristan. All right, let's pray for this offering. Father, again, thank you for the chance to give, but specifically so that children around the world can learn about you and experience you. And we pray your blessing upon this offering. Amen. Here is our change. 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 Here is our love. Here is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. He is the one. He is Jesus. Here is our love, here is our God who's come to bring us back to Him. She is the one, she is Jesus. Well, now we are actually going to get to experience a Bible point and a Bible verse and a Bible story this morning. So today we're going to learn that the Bible helps us to stand strong. And Victoria is the fox here on the grounds at Kingdom Rock. You know, foxes are very smart. And one of the things we can remember because of Victoria is that when we don't have answers, when we don't know what to do, the smart thing to do is to go to God in his word because he will teach us the way to go. So let's find out about our Bible verse this morning. And the way that that happens here at Kingdom Rock is you have to shout out three times on the count of three, raise the banner high. So here we go. One, two, three. Raise the banner high. Raise the banner high. So here is our verse. Let me teach you the motions for it. It says, your word is a lamp for my feet so that we can see the way to go, right? And it's a light for my path, right? And that's Psalms 119, 105. So let's put that all together. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Psalms 119, 105. And because our story today is going to have something to do with God's word, where do you think the clue might be hidden this morning? I'm here in Bible. Should I go should I go check there? Let's see what we got. Oh, I see a clue. I see a clue. Here we go. It says, what a surprise. What can you say? Josiah, a king, follows God's way. So, Brother James, you can show us our picture for our Bible story today. And this morning, I'm going to need your help in telling the story. It is about King Josiah, who became king when he was only eight years old. Do I have anybody this morning that is exactly eight years old? I don't have any eight-year-olds. Well, where am I like seven and nine-year-olds? Do I have any seven or nine-year-olds? Right. Can you imagine being king at that age? If you were king, if you're not that age, imagine being that age. What command would you make as a king at eight years old? Would you want to have ice cream all the time? Pizza party. Pizza party. Oh. I have, to, I have to confess, when I was eight, I probably would have made a command that my brothers had to leave me alone all of the time, right? That, that seems like a realistic command. Well, the thing about Josiah is his father, King Amnon, 
was a horrible bad king that did not follow God. And his grandfather, Manasseh, was a horrible God. I mean, a horrible king who did not follow after God. But Josiah, even though he was only eight years old, there was something in his heart that said, I want to follow after God because he remembered the stories of his ancestor, King David, the one who wrote that 23rd Psalm. And he said, I want to be more like that king. So he tried to follow after God. And one of the things that he, he thought would be a good idea would be to rebuild the temple. Because just like in the time of Nehemiah, when the wall had been destroyed and they had to rebuild it, the temple was still in shambles. And so Josiah said, we, we need to get the temple fixed so that we have a place to worship. So he called the high priest, Hilkiah, and he said, make sure that we have money to pay the craftsmen, the stonemasons, and the carpenters, and make sure they have supplies, and tell them to go to get to work. So I need you to pretend you're working on the temple, right? We're working on the temple, that's right. They're cutting stones, they're doing things. And while they're doing all of that, they find something. And so they take it to Hilkiah, the high priest, and when he looked at it, he said, oh, I think this is a book of God's law. And so he took it to Josiah, and he read it to King Josiah. Now, do I have a kid that might want to be a reader this morning? Come on up here, Lakeland. I saw that hand. I saw Easton's too. Do you want to come too? Because we can share. Sure? Okay. All right. Anybody else want to be a reader? All right. We've got a mic here. All right. You can read all of it. Yeah. Yeah. God spoke these words. I am the Lord your God. You must you must not have any other gods except me. You must not make yourselves in any idols. You must not worship or serve any idol. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Remember to keep the sab Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Sabbath as a holy day. You may work and get things done during six days each week. But the seventh day is a day of rest to honor the Lord your God. Honor your father and your mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land that the Lord your God is going to give you. You must not murder. You must not be unfaithful to your spouse. You must not steal. You must not tell lies about your neighbor in court. You must you must not want to take your neighbor's house. You must not want his wife or his servants or his ox or his donkey. You must not want to take anything that belongs to your neighbor. Exodus 22 through 17. Thank you, Lakeland. All right. Well, as Hilkiah read that to Josiah, Josiah was thinking, if this is the way God teaches us to live, our people have not been doing that. And so to show how sad he was, he tore his clothes. So can you make a nice rip sound? Oh, there we go, there we go. It seems strange to us that somebody would rip their clothing, but that's what they did in that day to show that they were so very upset. And so Josiah said, this is bad news. God must be very unhappy with us because we have not been following after his ways. So he said, go and, and get a word from the Lord about what we should do about this. So Hilkiah went to the prophetess Huldah and said, we have found this book of the law and we realize we are not following God. What should we do? And Huldah said, this is God's message for you. 
because you have been disobedient, there will be consequences for your, for your actions. But because King Josiah has been repentant, he has shown such sorrow about this, it's not going to happen in his lifetime. So they brought that back to the king, and the king said, gather all of the people together, because we're going to pray, and I'm going to read this to all the people, and he did. And he said, and I promise as your king that I will follow after God. And he invited the people to make the same promise. And they did. They said, we want to follow after God. And then Josiah said, there's one more thing we need to do. If we're going to follow after God, one of those laws was we're not supposed to have any idols. And under the reign of the previous two kings, many idols had been set up all throughout the land. An idol is when people take and make things out of wood or stone to be a pretend God. And they would set it up and they would worship it. And Josiah's like, That's, we're not worshiping our true God like that. So he said, we have to destroy those idols. In a moment, we're going to do that. The ones that are up here are for the kids. But I want the grown-ups to get to participate in this as well. So if I can get a couple of volunteers, I've got a basket up here and a basket up here. And they're going to come around. Just a couple people come on up here. There we go. I see one. I see two. All right. So, Cole, you pass around on this side and make sure every adult gets a cup. And Easton, you pass out on that side. Just pass them down the rows and make sure all the adults get a cup. And you're going to use that in a minute. You're going to want to put it on the floor somewhere close to your foot. They're being such great helpers. And while they're passing those out to the adults, I need all the kids to come up here and kind of just sit on these couple of empty rows up here. All the kids come up here to the empty rows. So you'll be close for what we're about to do. Trust me, it's going to be fun. You want to do it. Just have a seat on any of these empty, empty rows up here, all my kids. Here they come, here they come. <laughs> so this is what King Josiah said. He said, I want you to go out throughout the land and wherever you see an idol, destroy it. Just squish it. Get rid of it. And once it's been destroyed, bring it, and we're going to throw it in the fire at the altar, all right? So when I give the signal, what you're going to do, the kids are going to be responsible for all the little green idols up here. All the grown-ups are going to be responsible for the one you've got. But you're going to stand up, and you're going to squish that idol, and then bring it and throw it into the fire. All right? Are you ready? All right, all the kids, get up, move around so you can find one. All right, on your mark, get set, squish those idols. All right. And then bring them to the fire. Excellent, excellent. Throw them in the fire. That's right, throw them in the fire. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Here's the fire rip. There you go. wonderful to see all those false idols being thrown into the fire. 
as the people chose to follow after God. And of course, what we learn in this Bible story is that God's word helps us to stand strong. Because it's one thing to want to follow after God. King Josiah wanted to follow after God, but he didn't know how until he heard God's word. And so when we follow after God, we need to look into his word so that we know how to follow. All right, thank you, kids. You can go back and sit with your parents now. That concludes our Bible story this morning about King Josiah and standing strong for God with his word. And we've got one more song that we want to share with you this morning. This one you may know. It's called Soon and Very Soon We're Going to See the King. So let's get up on our feet so that we can worship this morning. Thank you. You can have a seat. Well, for those of you that like to know the numbers, here are our numbers for Vacation Bible School. We had a total of 61 different participants between children and youth that were here at least one night during the week. And then those are our averages for each of the nights, as well as our volunteers. And speaking of our volunteers... I know everybody likes to talk about all the things that Miss Michelle does to make VBS happen. And yeah, it's, it's part of what I do as a children's minister. But the thing about Vacation Bible School is it takes a whole lot more than one person to make it happen. So first I want to say thank you for praying for our Vacation Bible School. That is what truly makes the biggest difference. But if you donated something or if you served in any capacity for Vacation Bible School, would you stand up? Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And any of our volunteers that did not get your goodie bag, I still have some, so be sure and get one to take home with you. And now for the time that everybody enjoys, we're going we're gonna to dim the lights, and then we're going to watch our VBS slideshow. Will you get the lights, Brother James, so I don't have to step down?
Well, there is one more thing that we can use your help with. If you are available to remain for just a few minutes after the service, all of this can come down and you can just put everything in the Fly Kids room because I get to sort through it and determine what goes where and get it all put away. Um, thank you. I hope that you have enjoyed our VBS Sunday this morning. And remember, God loves you. And when you trust in him, you will always stand strong. Brother James, come and dismiss us with prayer. Well, Vacation Bible School is always a great time in the summer. It is a big job. Michelle works for weeks and weeks um, to get it ready. Thank her. And if you notice the numbers, our percentage of volunteers to participants is exceptionally high. And thank you. That's what makes this Vacation Bible School great. And maybe some of you, like me, still remember some of those lessons you learned in Vacation Bible School that have stuck with you all of your life. That's what we pray for every year, that the hearts that we get to speak truth into in this special time, that what happens is that those hearts are turned toward God for the rest of their lives. That's why we do it. Let's pray together today. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great week of Vacation Bible School, those lives that we have been able to touch for you, how we pray that these will be permanent investments, reaping dividends for the lives of these children and their children for years to come. We thank you that your word helps us to stand strong Help us, we pray, stand strong for the truth of our God. Help us to stay in right relationship with Jesus, our Savior. And then we pray your blessings upon those who have helped to make this week such a success. Now I pray, bless your people. Bless them as they go out into this week. Bless them exactly as they need to be blessed for the challenges they will face this week. Dismiss us now with your blessing. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. You are dismissed. <laughs>